When it comes to pub food at my local pub, nothing beats the roast of the day because the roast that they cook most is pork. Mm. I call it porchetta, but it is really simple to do. And I'm going to share the secrets Ooh. to cooking the perfect roll of pork. Perfect. I love that we're both sharing secrets today. I know, that's what it's all about. It is. Now, what I have here is a roll of pork. This is the loin which comes from the, from the belly or the barrel, we mm -hmm. call it. And I've got my butcher to trim it up for me. You can get your butcher to do it or you can do it yourself. It's really easy to do. So this is the loin, nice, big, juicy piece of meat here. And this is the belly part here. And that is where some fat is, and that's what helps to keep it really moist and juicy, really important. But the other thing is we've left some of the skin on there, which mm -hmm. forms a flap to go over the edge of it. Nice. The other thing that you want to make sure you do is the outside here, we need to score it because the most important part of eating pork is crackling. Crackling. Now, I'll just scratch it down like this and make sure you do it with a good sharp knife. See, I've just got it going everywhere. Really important that you score the outside Why? of it. Why? because you need to release the fat that's okay. there and that will help to get it to crackle and help to bubble up. Okay. Really, really important. Now, thyme and rosemary there. Mm. Peel off a bit of it and chop it nice and fine for me. You must season the loin of pork before mm. you go any further. Take a big bit of salt and sprinkle it on. And you might okay. think I'm putting a lot of salt on here. I am, because this is the most important part. Need salt. We it hear you, Richard. Salt. You've got to put plenty of salt on we it. Hear you. And pork just loves it. I also like to put lots of herbs on the inside oh. to give it a lovely, fresh flavour. This is chopped parsley that's chopped nice and fine. Mm -hmm. And I've also got some sage. It is quite strong, so take it easy. So that's about a tablespoon of chopped sage on mm -hmm. there. And I'm also going to put something else, which is ground fennel. I love ground oh, fennel, okay. so I often put fennel seed on here, but ground fennel is lovely. Thyme and rosemary. Beautiful, ready, go for it. Ready to go. I'll sprinkle that on. Grab that garlic over there yes. and the microplane, and I want you to come over here, oh. and I want you to microplane it over the top. So you want little bits of garlic in there. Now, garlic's okay. quite strong, yes. and by microplaning it, it makes it nice and fine so we can spread it all mm. the way around. Now, you've got it microplane beautifully. If you just stay right there, I'll mm. just do this. Tap, tap, tap. And out it comes. There we go. And if there's anything in the bottom mm. here, we just give that a bit of a, a what there. I'm still holding on. I oh. won't give it up. I'm, I'm taking control of this. Yes, you this are. Is, this is important business. Now, if you've got that pepper mill over mm. there, I want you to use pepper like you stole it. Like it's the last pork loin on the earth and you, want to, and you want to make sure it tastes beautiful. And I put a little bit more herb on there, that mm. little spot, and we just roll it up like this. You can see... It's been trimmed beautifully so that it goes all the way around mm. and I've got that extra little bit of flap that covers over. Really, really important. Now, the other thing is we need to tie this up because if we don't tie it up, it's just going to come apart and that's the last thing we want to do. Butcher's twine, untie a fair bit of it and this is the bit where you know that I was in a Boy Scouts. Oh, and OK. It's about I, the knot tying. It is all okay. about... It's a little hobby of mine, tying knots. And I was oh. in the Boy Scouts. I got a couple of knot badges, so it's one of my favourite things. Now, I've got a little slip knot there okay. and I've got a little knot on the end of it to stop it from coming apart. I put the slip knot over the top of it there like that. Yes. Also the name of a very good band. And then I tighten it up like that, but not too tight. And then watch this. Yes. Once, twice, over the top and pull on it. That is the okay. lock knot, the Adrian Richardson lock knot. So okay. once, twice over the top and then we go down. To get your badge, your pork loin badge from Richo, yes. you just need to make sure that you've got the right distance between all of these knots. See two fingers? Wow, Richo, I'm learning all these things about you now, about your knot tying and your Boy Scout days. Very exciting. You can imagine me with a little cap on and I really enjoyed the Boy Scouts and I think it's a great program and lots of kids should get involved in the Scouts. There you go. There go. Look at us. We're covering a whole range of topics today. I'm there loving it. And I just go around the back side of it here mm. and just fold the knot underneath and over, a bit over the top here like mm. this, and we just tie that off there. Oh, I love this. Wow, this is hard work for Richo. Jeez, little Lisa. Not hard at all. It is the most pleasurable thing that I do. I love doing this. Now, you'll notice the skin is quite dry. Mm. I take it out of the plastic and let it dry out in the fridge. That is another secret to making sure you've got really good crackling. Now, here's the other way of making sure. Pour a heap of oil over the top of it like this and make sure you spread that oil 
all over it. It all helps to fry the outside and makes it delicious. Now, if you're worried about having too much salt in your diet, you might want to turn away right now because we put plenty of salt on the outside mm. of this pork crackling because the salt will help to draw out the moisture and make it crackle up. Mm. And a lot of it will fall off as well. So yes. don't worry too much about that. Now, normally you'd put this on a wire rack, pop it in the oven, but I've got this thing here. Mm. This is my little rotisserie that I'm going to put in the oven. I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. That what you need to do now is pop the skewer or the little sword through the middle of it like that, nice yes. and carefully. Mm. Tighten it up. That's it. Grab that little piece yes. there onto the other side and then push it all the way in. And that secures the pork. So as it's going around and around and around, mm. it doesn't slip. It stays in place. Okay. Now, all we need to do is take this over to the oven and I'll show you how to work the rotisserie function. You can see my oven is on 220 degrees and I've got the rotisserie function engaged. You open the oven up and just slide out this special rack here. Now, what I'm looking for is the little notch right at the back. Once I've got it slotted in, I let it sit on the wire rack here. Unscrew the handle here and then you're ready to go. I'll let this cook at 220 degrees Celsius for about 25 minutes till it crackles up beautifully and then I'll turn the oven down to 175 degrees Celsius and when I stick my probe in there and it gets to 72 degrees Celsius, I know my pork is cooked to perfection. Oh, Priya. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that crackling. <sighs> You're so relieved and happy and just, you're in your heaven, aren't you? That's the way it should sound. And, mm. you know, I've let it rest for a little bit before we get into it. Really important when you do roast any meat, and rest it for at least half the cooking time. And that will allow all the juices that are in the meat to stay in there. Because when you cook meat, the muscle fibres contract. And if you cut straight into it, straight out of the oven, all the juices will squeeze out of it. Okay. So let it rest, most important Wonderful. thing. Wonderful. Oh, the crackling. I do love, like, I believe in everything in moderation. I'm that kind of good chef, Richo. I think eat more of the good stuff and eat the sometimes stuff sometimes. Can you hear those oh. angels singing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this, though. This is beautiful. Nicely seasoned, mm. lots of crackling on there. Some people peel the crackling off first. I don't do that. I just slice into it like this and let it fall where it lands. Mm. That's what I think. Now, this is perfect like this and you can imagine going to your local pub, having this roast pork mm. and then putting vegetables and, mm. and apple sauce and all those things. We're not going to do that, Priya. We're going to live on the edge. I'm going to show you what oh. we're going to do. A little piece of pork in the middle there and oh. some of this mayonnaise because I love mayonnaise. Okay. And if you can mix some of that salsa together there, mix some of that around and pop that onto this pork here. You loving this? Well, I was not anticipating that we were going here. And then is you squeeze it all in like that. Cut that in half. Some for you, some for me. Wow. Can you, I can hear those you. angels singing. But I'm going for the crackling. I'm not going to oh. lie to you. Mm. Just get into it. Have a taste of it. Perfect. Mm. 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 Is that the most delicious thing you've ever eaten in your whole life? I can't say that, Richard, because my grandma's watching at home, but this is pretty amazing. I would have to agree with you. Mm. 